Hello students, uh, today we will continue with our uh, text uh, on saying please by A.G. Gardiner. Uh, we began uh, with this uh, essay which deals with um, manners and being polite uh, in life and uh, the kind of role that it plays in society. So um, above, we'll continue reading. Um, but though we are bound to endorse the verdict against the lift man, most people will have a certain sympathy with him. While it is true that there is no law that compels us to say please, there is a social practice much older and much more sacred than any law which enjoins us to be civil. And the first requirement of civility is that we should acknowledge a service. Please and thank you are the small change that we, uh, that, um, with which we pay our way as social beings. They are uh, the little courtesies by which we keep the machine of life oiled and running sweetly. They put our intercourse upon the basis of a friendly cooperation and easy give and take instead of, the, uh, of on the basis of superiors dictating to in inferiors. It is, very vulg it is a very vulgar mind that would wish to command where he had the, serv uh, had the service um, for asking and have it with willingness and good feeling instead of resentment. So here he deals with the core issue of this whole essay of how um, it is important to say thank you and please. They might seem like little courtesies, but they keep the oil of life actually, everyday life going. And we, um, we live in a better society because we practice such things. Uh, because we take the time to say these things and uh, to not make it like a superiors dictating to inferiors, but, uh, but to have that respect, the general respect. So this is something which we see uh, in Western culture um, more, uh, uh, more, prof uh, um, more present than in our own culture. Uh, it's something which is lacking in our culture because when we see um, many people uh, barking orders or like being rude uh, to anyone who is from a working class or uh, laborers or any uh, sort of service providers that we have, caretakers in, uh, in a building or any sort of co uh, co context that you see, you don't see that kind of a respect given to these small professions. And here he actually uh, talks about the lift man and uh, what he did. Uh, we do have a, a certain sympathy to, uh, with him as general public that we would like to actually do our work because someone has uh, requested it in a polite manner than someone who actually rudely barks uh, some order at us. Uh, so this is the distinction. This is something which he says that is uh, a sign of civility in a society and how um, this makes society better um, uh, on the whole and which is something which is very needed in our uh, society also um, of how this respect needs to be given even to, um, uh, even to cheap labor or uh, uh, all, all classes of people who act uh, actually do their work and uh, work hard for their uh, livelihood. So, you know, Let's uh, continue reading and uh, in, on, in the next part of this uh, essay, he introduces a very common man uh, as an exemplary, exemplary figure for all that he's trying to say uh, in this essay. So let us uh, look at this one person that he focuses upon. Uh, I should like to feature in this connection my friend, the polite conductor. By this discriminating ti uh, title, I do not intend to suggest a rebuke on, to conductors generally. On the contrary, I am disposed to think that there are a few classes of men who come through the ordeal of a very trying call, a calling, better than bus conductors do. Here and there you will meet an unpleasant specimen who regards the passengers as his natural enemies, uh, as creatures whose chief pur purpose on the bus is to cheat him and who can only be kept reasonably honest by an, a loud uh, a loud voice or aggressive manner. So he says that he has this 
particular example, this feature, he wants to introduce this example as an exemplary figure um, of a conductor, a polite conductor. He uh, refers to someone he knows as a conductor who is a polite conductor. And then right away qualifies that um, I am uh, I don't mean that all the conductors are uh, not polite and only this guy is polite. That's not what I mean. Uh, in general, most of them are good. Uh, but you find like one or two, uh, you know, here and there who have a general sort of bad, uh, um, bad attitude towards the passengers and considers them as their, uh, uh, his enemies, right? So, uh, he, he uses this, uh, th this example in, in introducing and is very careful in doing so. And um, we will, we'll see why actually, because uh, that also requires a little bit of context to that. Um, so, he says that uh, most of them have a very difficult job. As, as you know, that uh, even in our country, it's much more difficult actually, um, that they have to stand uh, in buses and uh, they, uh, um, you know, sell tickets and go, um, a whole day and it's a very trying sort of calling and in, it can make a person cranky. But he says in general, most of them are good. But he wants to feature and uh, focus upon this one person uh, whom he saw something special in. So let us look at uh, what that uh, could be. So, but this uh, this type is rare. Okay, so he's talking about uh, um, the cranky kinds. This type uh, that they are rare, uh, rare, rare actually. Uh, ones with uh, attitude and a sort of anim animosity towards uh, passengers. Rarer than it used to be. I fancy the public owes much to the underground railway company, which also runs the buses and for for insisting on a certain standard of civility to its servants, and um, taking care that the standard is observed. In doing this, uh, it not only makes the things pleasant for the traveling public, but performs an important social service. So he says that uh, he, um, he thanks uh, the underground railway company. So the, basically, the, these people actually uh, train the conductors also, uh, bus conductors also, along with the uh, train uh, personnel, I guess. Uh, and uh, he says that because of their efforts, uh, there is a lot of civility maintained. So uh, he talks and appreciates the, uh, the uh, public sort of, you know, uh, um, uh, apparatus that they have like in their government, basically, right? So basically, uh, okay, let's continue. It is not therefore with any feeling of unfriendliness to con conductors as a class that I pay a tribute to a particular member of that class. I first became conscious of his existence one day when I jumped onto a bus and found that I had left home without any money in my pocket. Everyone has had the experience and knows the feeling, the mixed feeling which the discovery arouses. You are annoyed because you look like a fool at the best and like a knave at the worst. You would not, uh, you would not be at all surprised if the conductor eyed, eyed you coldly, as much as uh, to say, "Yes, I know that stale old trick. Now then, get uh, get off. Uh, then off you get." And even if the conductor is a good fellow and lets you down easily, you are faced with the necessity of going back and the inconvenience perhaps of missing your train of, uh, or your engagement. So basically, he was in a particular situation one day when uh, he found himself with no change with him uh, to pay for the ticket. And it is a very, uh, he says that, um, to, uh, of course, uh, anybody who uh, travels or commutes by, uh, by public uh, transport uh, has this kind of an experience. Uh, one day they find that, you know, they forgot to carry any change. They don't have any money on them. So this is the time when you don't, you didn't have uh, smartphones and, uh, uh, you know, online payment, uh, payment methods and everything. So uh, basically it is a very embarrassing situation. Uh, so there is a two different ways that um, the uh, conductor can, uh, could, uh, could understand you. He, he might be thinking that, you know, this is like a trick, uh, uh, you know. Uh, that you as a cunning person are uh, trying to play a trick on him or you, he, he might think that, uh, you know, even if he's a, a good person and uh, lets you t 
to uh, allows you to get down the next stop that would be an inconvenience also because you would miss uh, uh, your engagement wherever you are going or uh, you just have to have that embarrassing experience in front of everyone you look like a fool in front of everyone that you know you forgot the money you just got got on to a bus like that so he's he was in such kind of, such a kind of an uh, um, situation and uh, well, let's see what happened now uh, how this one particular conductor reacts to this whole uh, situation so having searched my pockets in vain for stray coppers uh, and having found i was utterly penniless i told the conductor with an honest uh, with as honest a face i could assume that i couldn't pay the fare and must go back for money oh you needn't get off that's all right said he all right said i but i haven't a copper on me oh i'll i'll book you uh, through he replied uh, where do you want to go and he handled his bundle of tickets in the air uh, with the air of a man who was prepared to give me a ticket for anywhere from uh, from the bank to hong kong i said uh, i said it was very kind of him and told him where i wanted to go and as he gave me the ticket i said but where shall i send the fare oh you'll see me some day all right he said cheerfully as he uh, as he turned to go and then luckily my fingers still wandering in the corners of my pockets lighted on a shilling and the account was squared but the fact did not lessen the glow of pleasure which was so good natured an action had given him uh, given me so basically he was in a situation where uh, he couldn't find any change on him he forgot to get any money for his ticket bus ticket and this conductor was extremely kind with him and he was very uh, he did it in a very uh, light hearted and very cheerful manner he didn't make it a big deal at all and he said like okay you can pay me later and uh, and when he was worried that you know how will i pay it later and all he's like oh you keep traveling here right like you can uh, um you can take the take a bus here any time and it's uh, no big deal and all so he was very cool with him so he was very uh, understanding and uh, he showed this kind of a very good natured um you know with a smile on his face such positive positivity so while the um, author is actually uh, gardener is actually looking for his change he he does find in his uh, in his coat uh, the coat pockets uh, uh, one shilling and he does pay the uh, fare and uh, um, he gets a ticket okay but uh, it is not really about that uh, about whether he was actually no, um, you know he, he could actually pay the fare or not that's not the issue here but his whole di- day is lightened up he feels so uh, positive and good that there are such people in the world who have such a cheerful attitude and a positive optimistic uh, attitude towards uh, uh, everything and uh, he um, i think this um, uh, this conductor had made his day actually okay and uh, he he felt really good after this so um, he meets him later again in the in a bus again uh, while he was tra- uh, traveling and uh, this is what uh, happens in the next uh, part so a few days after my most sensitive toe my, uh, a few days after my most sensitive toe was trampled on rather heavily as i sat reading on the top of a bus i looked up and with some anger and more agony and saw my friend of the cheerful countenance sorry sir he said i know these are uh, heavy boots got them because of my own feet get trod on so much and now i am treading on other uh, other people's hope i didn't hurt you sir he had hurt me but he was so nice about it that i assured him that he hadn't after this i began to observe him um, whenever i boarded his bus and found a curious Uh, a curious pleasure in the um constant good nature of his bearing 
He seemed to have an inexhaustible fund of patience and a gift for making his passengers comfortable. I noticed that uh, if it was raining, he would run up the stairs, um, making his passengers comfortable. Uh, run up the stairs to give someone the tip uh, that um, there was room inside. With old people, he was uh, as considered as a son and with children as solicitous as a father. He had evidently a peculiar warm place in his heart for young people and always indulged in, in some merry jest with them. And he had a blind man on board. It was not enough to set him down safely on the pavement. He would call to uh, call to Bill in front to, uh, call to Bill in front to wait while he took uh, him across the road or round the corner or otherwise safely on his way. In short, I find that he radiated such an atmosphere of good temper and kindliness that a, a journey with him was a lesson in natural courtesy and good manners. So he goes on to uh, have this long description of this uh, good person, uh, this good conductor who was going around being cheerful, spreading positivity, helping out old people, um, being, uh, uh, being very nice to ch uh, kids and, uh, and joking around with the young people. And he was this one uh, wonderful person actually. And he started observing this man, observing this man as a passenger. Whenever he got on his bus, he used to observe how he treated everyone around him. So it was not like a one-time thing for this, uh, uh, this conductor. He went around being nice wherever he went and he was very positive and showed this polite sort of demeanor and uh, was extra nice to people. For, and he, he gives numerous ex examples, especially with the blind person, how he used to uh, get off the bus and make sure the blind person crosses the road and they are uh, set on their way uh, safely. Um, he doesn't have to do this extra, uh, hasn't have to be extra nice like this, but he is doing that, going around being a good person. And he appreciates him from his heart. And he says that he is the best example for a good natured, sort of good mannered person in society. So, uh, we, we, and he goes on to describe how, why he picks this uh, person, why he picks the, this particular conductor now in the next part. What struck me uh, um, particularly was the ease with which he got through his work. Uh, if bad manners was infectious, so also are good manners. So basically, he, uh, he makes the same point that he made about bad manners. Uh, just like they, uh, uh, they spread like viruses and diseases, even good manners is infectious. Even joy and a smile and a um, good sort of behavior, even that spread, uh, spreads um, you know, like, uh, like a disease or like a virus actually. So, if we encounter in uh, if we en uh, encounter incivility, most of us are apt to become un, uh, to become uncivil. But it is unusually un uh, at least an un unusually uncouth person who can be disagreeable with the sunny people. So basically, it's also in the response of people too. Uh, he uh, his feet was trodden upon even in the previous uh, previous paragraph. But he did not re respond in an angry manner. If it was another person, he would have actually gotten into an argument with that person, I guess. But that doesn't happen. Because only very uh, messed up people or like uh, very troublesome people actually uh, end up responding to even such people with, uh, you know, uh, in a negative manner. So uh, only an uncouth person, he says, so means uh, uncivil or uncivilized person, only that person would do something like that to such sunny people who are all full of joy and uh, uh, goodness. So it was, um, it is with manners as, the, uh, as with the weather. Nothing clears up my spirits like a fine day, said Keats uh, and, ch and a chief person, person descends on, uh, on even the gloomiest of us with something of a benediction of a fine day. So just like good weather, sometimes you have a sunny weather and beautiful weather and you feel better in uh, within yourself, right? In the same way, if after meeting a cheerful, nice, uh, 
happy person you feel the same, uh, similar sort of thing and uh, he quotes keet as saying the same thing actually that a uh, cheerful person uh, you know uh, makes the, your day better and uh, and so it was always fine um, it was always fine whether on the po polite conductor's bus and uh, his own civility his conciliarity a uh, conciliatory address and a good humored bearing infected his passengers in lightening their spirits he lightened his own task his gaiety was not a wasteful luxury but a sound investment so he says that he was making his job which was a difficult calling as we have already established here in this essay that uh, a job of, of the profession of a conductor um, is a very difficult job and um, it requires a lot of a uh, lot of patience and it requires a lot of uh, physical it has a physical strain also to it right standing in the bus in a moving bus like this uh, for hours uh, but he says that be, by being positive like this it was actually an investment for him it, he did it with ease remember he was not uh, uh, you know it was not draining him of energy being nice but it actually made his uh, work uh, easier and it uh, made things go smoother because of this right um, so uh, this is what he says about the uh, conductor now yes we will uh, talk about the, his um, um, the final comments in the next video.